One great new feature for the animators amongst you is the integration of OpenSubdiv into Blender. I have created a simple animation of a strange object heading towards us and you see that the playback is kind of slow like 9 frames per second, sometimes even 8. That's totally not real time and totally not good enough to judge the animation. And this could have something to do with the fact that I'm using five levels of subdivisions here, but I don't want to change this because I want to judge the animation with exactly this amount of subdivisions. And that means open subdiv to the rescue. But I turn it on and it reads it's disabled. Well, it's disabled by default. You have to turn it on and you can do this in user preferences and then up there in system and then to the bottom left, open subdiv compute. Here I'm having a lot of options. CPU is very similar to the current open to the current subdivision service modifier. Then there's OpenMP, which means on several processors threads will compute the subdivisions, which is already a good speed boost. And then up there we have two options that read GLSL, and those are working on the graphics card and are the fastest. But beware that you might not have all the options. It depends on your graphics card and drivers. So let me choose GLSL compute. And now when I play back the animation again, it's actually working fluently. So totally perfect 24 frames per second. And now I can finally judge my, ani my animation. But there's another thing I'd like to note you. And that is take a look at the model here and what's happening when I turn off open subdiv and on and off again. You see that the geometry is changing. And that was actually a big problem before because every program that would implement subdivision surfaces had subtle differences in the implementation. And thus, if you would import a model from somewhere else into Blender, it would probably look a little different than in the source package. And if you export a model in Blender and go to another program and use their subdivision implementation, it would of course also look different. And now with Open Subdiv, it's possible that if you export your model to another program that also supports open subdiv, it will subdivide exactly the same and thus the look will also be exactly the same. That's already one great thing about open subdiv and the other one of, of course the speed, but there are unfortunately a few limitations like for example, the subsurf modifier with open subdiv should always be on the bottom of the stack. And at the moment you cannot use more than one material on objects that are using open subdiv. So be aware of this. I will list all the limitations in the description of this video. And you, I'd also like to remind you that this is just a first step implementation of Open Subdiv in Blender and that the Blender Foundation will work on all those limitations. So at some point, Open Subdiv will become the default subdivision method in Blender.